Okay, so let's um, kind of review something from the previous lesson. Um, we were talking about transformations. In the previous lesson, we looked at the quadratic functions. We looked at the um, uh, function x squared, which was we call the parent function. And so we looked at transforming the parent function to other functions. So in terms of vertical shift, if you take your function and you add a number to it, then it will be a vertical shift, so uh, up c units, if it if we took the function and we're subtracting a number, then it would be a vertical shift uh, down c units. For a horizontal shift, notice how um, over here c is on the outside of the function, and over here c is inside of the function. So if c is inside, then it's a horizontal shift. This was a little bit more difficult for students uh, to figure out because it's counterintuitive to what you would think. So um, in terms of horizontal shift, um, students seem to think that since this is a plus c, they would go c units to the right, but it's actually, when you actually graph it, it's actually c units to the left. All right, so so do uh, it's counterintuitive of what you would think. So c units to the left, and if it's x minus c, there will be c units to the right. Okay, and then let's see. We talked about the reflection about the x-axis. So remember the negative x squared? So you would graph the x squared and then you reflect it about the x-axis. So if there's a negative in front of the function, f of x, then it is a reflection. Now see how this is f of negative x and this is negative f of x? So basically, um, if, if you want to find f of negative x, you would take f of x and you reflect it about the y-axis. So negative, so x becomes negative x. So it's, it's kind of reflection around y-axis. So instead of saying x equal 4, you say x equal negative 4. Okay? And uh, we didn't do anything about stretching or shrinking. That will be for another lesson. And um, same thing here. And then this is just a summary. So when you get to that page, just look at your summary. So we talked about vertical shifts. So notice the C's are on the outside. We talked about horizontal shifts. Notice the numbers are on the inside. The C's are on the inside. We talked about reflection. Uh, about the x-axis. We talked about reflection about the y-axis. Uh, we didn't do anything about um, stretching or shrinking. We did talk about the order in which you would do things. So you do the horizontal shifting first. Then you would do the stretching or shrinking, which we haven't done yet. Then you do the reflecting and always do the vertical shifting last. Do the vertical shifting last. Okay? All right. Okay, so let's look at um, our new function. Well, actually, let's do this first. So let's kind of um, do this. The, this this should help you in my math lab. So um, suppose that the graph of a function g is known. All right, so you know the graph of this function g. The graph of g of x plus 4. So what does the 4 do to this function g? That's the question. So the graph of g of x plus 4 may be obtained by a blank shift of the graph of g, blank a distance of 4 units. So it would be a um, vertical shift. Remember, the, if, it's, if the number's on the outside, it's a vertical shift. So vertical shift, okay, vertical shift of the graph of g. And um, so since this is positive, you would go up. So it would be uh, up. A distance of four units. Okay, if it was minus four. It would be down a distance of four units. Okay, the next one. Suppose that the graph of a function g is known. The graph of um, g of x plus three. Now notice the threes in the inside of the function. So you got to remember what kind of shift this is. It's not vertical, but it's horizontal. Okay, so it's a horizontal shift. And the question is which way. So we know it's three units, but which way? So it's counterintuitive what you would think. So it's, uh, even though it says 3, it's not 3 units to the right, it's actually 3 units to the left. So you'd say to the left, to the left, a distance of 3 units. Okay? And then over here, suppose that the graph of a function f is known, then the graph of negative f of x can be obtained by a reflection. Okay, so that's a reflection of the graph of f of x about the x-axis, okay? And then for um, f of negative x, remember f of negative x, that's a reflection about the y-axis. All right, so that's just a quick review. You're going to use some of this information um, in my math lab. 
Okay, so now um, the prerequisite of this was the previous lesson, so it's very important you you look at the previous lesson, especially the part where we where we use the transparencies to help us understand some stuff. So we're not going to use transparency in this lesson. We used it in the last lesson, so you need to you need to go back to the last lesson and make sure that you view the video on that. So basically, we're just going to start uh, graphing these like you would on a worksheet using information from the last lesson. So uh, the only difference from the previous lesson is that we're using a different function. Okay? All right, but again, make sure you go, the prerequisite for this is the last lesson because of all the stuff we did with transparencies, trying to get the understanding of uh, transformations um, ingrained before actually working problems. Okay, so this is going to be transformations again. Our transformations um, and we're going to look at the function uh, the absolute value of x so that's going to be our parent function All right, so that's our parent function and um, so basic first thing you want to do though is make sure you know the just like with the uh, quadratic x squared we use five points you can use five points with the with the absolute values so make sure these are the five points you use it's always going to be these five points for your parent function zero 1, negative 1, one uh, 2, negative 2, just like x squared. Remember x squared? These were the x values you used. Now, the y values, so when, when you, if x is 0, the absolute value of 0 is 0, so that's 0. When uh, x is 1, I get y equals absolute value of 1, which is 1. When x is negative 1, I get y equals absolute value of negative 1, which is also 1. When x is 2, I get y equals absolute value of 2, which is 2. And when x is negative 2, I get y equals absolute value of negative 2, which is also a positive 2. So when I graph this, um, when I graph this, I'm going to get this. Right, let me do this. So I'm going to get 1, 1, I'm sorry, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, uh, 1, and negative 2, 2. And notice that it's not a curve, it's actually two rays. So remember from last semester that the graph of an absolute value is a V. So this is uh, f of x equal absolute value of x. So that's the graph of an absolute value. So that's going to be your parent function. So anything dealing with absolute value, you're going to do the parent function first. So these are the five points you're going to use, and you're going to connect them with two rays. Okay? All right, so let's look at this one. Okay, number one. All right, number one, um, use a graph. Use a graph of f of x, which equals absolute value of x, to obtain the graph of absolute of g of x. Sorry, g of x, which equals absolute value of x minus three. Okay. Now remember this number is on the outside so that's going to be a vertical shift and there's only one transformation is that vertical shift there's nothing else there's no reflection there's no horizontal shift there's just a vertical shift okay so what you're going to do first is you're going to graph your parent function first thing you're going to do All right, graph your parent function so 0 0 1 1 2 2 negative 1 1 negative 2 2 okay so that's your parent function. So that's going to be absolute value of x. Then you're going to now remember this part right here. So this is where you're going to shift vertically down, vertically down three units. So you're going to take this parent function and you're going to shift it vertically down three units every point. So watch what happens. The vertex. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And you connect them. And that was the only transformation you had to do, so that's your answer. This is g of x, which equals absolute value of x minus 3. All right, and you can see that, that you shifted it down 3 units. So if I were to take a a transparency and just kind of show you real quick. Um, let me just quickly cut this. 
i just quickly show you. So this is the um, points right here. So there's my graph. Okay. And so basically, notice that I'm taking this, this parent function. So this is the absolute value of x. Taking the parent function, and I'm shifting it down three units. One, two, three, and it overlaps the other one. Okay? All right, so that was that one. Okay, number two. All right, use the graph of f of x which equals absolute value of x to obtain the graph of g of x which equals this, absolute value of x plus 4. Okay? Alright, now notice the 4 is on the inside, so that's a horizontal shift. So this is horizontal shift. Horizontal shift. Alright, now again, we know it's 4 units because of the 4, but which way? Horizontal shift, 4 units, to the, and it's counterintuitive, so even though you see a plus 4, you think to the right, you actually go to the left, so 4 units to the left. Alright, now what you're going to do first, though, is you're going to graph, and that's the only transformation, it's just horizontal shift. So then you're going to graph the, the, um, the parent function, which is the absolute value of x, so it's here, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. Uh, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, 2. So there's your parent function. Now let's graph the um, function g of x. So I need to go four units to the left. So every point, I'm going to shift four units to the left. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And so this right here. This right here is g of x. So g of x is absolute value of x plus 4. And so if I take if I take this parent function, absolute value of x, right here, and I shift it 4 units to the left, notice what happens. 1, 2, 3, 4. I get this graph back. Okay? Number 3, suppose you had this. Use the graph of f of x, which equals x squared. I'm sorry, as a value of x, excuse me. That's the value of x to obtain the graph of g of x, which equals this. All right, so notice I'm going to have two transformations here. I'm going to have a reflection and a uh, horizontal shift. No, there's no a vertical shift. But remember the order. The order you're going to have to do this in will be um, the horizontal shift first and then the uh, reflection about the x-axis, okay? So we're going to, reflect, we're going to um, shift horizontally. Um, to the right two units to so shift horizontally to the right two units and then reflect about x-axis okay all right so what we're going to do first is we're going to graph the parent function so we're going to we're going to graph the absolute value of x so zero zero one one Two, two, zero, uh, um, one. I'm sorry, negative one, one, negative two, two, two. So what I've graphed here is the absolute value of x. All right. Then the next thing I've got to do, remember, is I've got to shift horizontally to the right two units. So I'm going to go to the right two units. I'm going to move every point to the right two units. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. And so you get something like this. Okay, so this right here, the green one is is where I shifted to the right. Oops, sorry. Shifted to the right two units. So that's x minus steps value x minus two. That's what that is. Okay? And so you can always check it so far. I 
that's what happens. So I'm going to take the, the uh, parent function. I'm going to shift it to the to the right two units. One, two. Okay. All right. And finally, on that one, I'm going to then reflect it about the x-axis. Now, what that means is that is that um, for every point, when reflected about the x-axis, the, remember the x coordinates stay the same as the y that changes becomes its opposite. So positive two becomes a negative two. Positive one becomes a negative one. Zero stays zero. One becomes a negative one. Uh, two becomes a negative two. And so this right here, this right here, is the one you wanted to grab. So that's g of x is equal to the uh, negative of absolute value of x minus 2. The opposite of the absolute value of x minus 2. All right, so that's that one. And then, let's see. Number four, for number four, let's say we had this one. For number four. Uh, let me see if I have room here. So number four, use the graph of f of x, which equals absolute value of x, to obtain the graph of g of x, which equals, and let's say it's this one. Okay. Now, the order is going to matter, especially here, since you do have a vertical shift. Always do the vertical shift last. So you're going to do horizontal first, horizontal shift um, to, the, uh, to the left, one unit, then reflect, and then you're going to uh, vertical shift, and then the vertical shift up three units. Okay? All right, so let's do that. So the first thing you're going to do, first thing you're going to do is graph the parent function. So you graph the parent function. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. Negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2. That's your parent function. Okay? Then you're going to do the um, horizontal shift. So one unit to the left, so one unit to the left. So you're going to go uh, from here to here, then one unit, one unit, one unit, one unit. So this is your graph. And you can tell you went one unit to the left. So the green, though, is, is uh, absolute value of x. Um, did I say left? Shoot, I, I'm sorry. I went to the right, excuse me. All right, let me change this. So let's throw this one away. Let's do this one over. It's one unit to the left. I'm not sure why I went to the right. So let's do this again. Okay. Zero, zero, one, one, two, two. Negative two, uh, negative one, one, negative two, two. So there's the absolute value of x. Now remember, this is, let's, Make sure again. So this is absolute value x plus one. So I've got to go one unit to the left. So in that case, I'm going to do this now. This point move to the left. This point move to the left. This point move to the left. One unit, one unit, and one unit. Okay. And so when you graph, you get this. So this is the graph. The green right here is the graph. The absolute value of x plus one. Okay. All right. And then the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to reflect that about the x-axis. So every point in that green graph is going to be reflected about the x-axis. So this point, which has y value 2, becomes a negative 2. Um, 0, let's see, 1 here becomes a negative 1. 0 stays 0. 1 becomes a negative 1. 2 becomes a negative 2. So the red right here is then this. Uh, Okay, so that's that now. And then finally, the next thing I gotta do is I, I gotta take that red graph now and then shift it up three units. So I'll take the red graph and shift it up three units. All right, so it's gonna be a little bit messy, but let's see what we get. Okay, this becomes, look right here, let's do the vertex. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I get this so far. 
Okay. And then over here, one, two, three, one, two, three. And so the brown graph is what I want. So that's g of x, which equals the negative absolute value of x plus 1, and then plus 3. Okay? All right, so that's what you're going to show. That's what you would show. Okay, so that's that's a quick um, um, review of absolute value of x. And the reason it's quicker than the other one is because the other one, we spent more time with the transparencies trying to understand um, uh, the transformations. And so um, once you understood that part, the fr previous lesson, then this one is the same thing, except you're de dealing with a different function, namely the absolute value of, of x.